It's almost certain that you've heard the claims that there was just this perpetual massive epidemic of starvation within the USSR. Communism and socialism have been linked with starvation. You've probably seen these pictures of bread lines, because there weren't any bread lines under capitalism. We're seeing one of these silly memes here. So what exactly is the truth? Well, there did exist food shortages for a short time during three periods of the USSR's history. During the first five-year plan, during the 40s, and in the 80s. So already the idea that there was just this constant mass food shortages is already debunked. However, the only argument anti-communists can really even make on this point is the food shortages during the 30s. Food problems in the 80s, which is the one typically cited, were due to Gorbachev's radical perestroika reforms. And ironically, his reforms focused on allowing private businesses to exist and moving away from a planned economy to a market economy. So citing this as a failure of socialism is actually kind of funny because it was allowing more capitalism which caused the shortages. Anyway, most Marxists do not defend the Soviet Union after Stalin's death because ever since Khrushchev, the bureaucracy which formed were always looking to move away from planning and were always trying to implement capitalistic reforms. This line was developed under the economic reform carried through by Khrushchev's successors, General Secretary Leonid Brezhnev and Prime Minister Eil Ksykosin. Let us consider profit. One of the economic instruments of socialism, a considerable enhancement of its role in socialist economy is an indispensable requisite for cost accounting. In fact, a term used to express the essence of the economic reform. Cost accounting, cause rascal, is defined by contemporary Soviet economists as a method of management based on ensuring the profitability of each individual enterprise. The essence of cost accounting is that any enterprise should cover its expenditures with its own income and should have a profit over and above this. The system of cost accounting makes every enterprise interested in obtaining a bigger profit. Contemporary Soviet economists thus admit that the Soviet economy since the economic reform is characterized by indeterminacy. That is anarchy, the indeterminacy that is manifested in the probabilistic nature of the anticipated economic result does exist and is objectively inherent even in socialist society. Centralized planning in conditions of broad independence of enterprise is also faced with the need of elaborating methods of managing the economy marked by growing indeterminacy, probability, stochastics of its processes. All this is not meant to suggest that the contemporary Soviet state has no economic plans, or that it no longer influences the direction of development of the Soviet economy. Like most orthodox capitalist states today, it draws up, from time to time, broad economic plans. These are, however, not imposed upon enterprises by means of directives. The Soviet state endeavors to influence enterprises to follow, broadly, the lines of its current economic plan by the use of the same kind of economic levers that are used by the state in orthodox capitalist countries. Now shortages during the 40s were caused by obvious reasons. The Soviets were hit extremely hard during World War II which caused a famine. Now even though they weren't hit as hard, the United States also had food problems during both world wars which also resulted in rationing. So the only argument that you could really make is the food problems in the 30s during the first five year plan. Now it's important to understand that the goal of the first five year plan was to modernize the economy. So they had to mainly focus on heavy industry instead of products for consumers. Now this isn't to say that they didn't do anything at all to improve food production. That's what collectivization was for. Collectivization was an attempt to modernize farming and bring farms under the control of the peasantry as a whole instead of the elite peasant class called the Kulaks which controlled the farms at this time. The Kulaks wanted to retain control of the farms and amass even more wealth for themselves, so they engaged in sabotage of collective farms and other terrorist attacks which hindered food production. Along with this uh, came labor shortages and the peasantry not really knowing how to use modern equipment that well also contributed to said food problems. Anna Louise Strong, who was an eyewitness of these events, comments, The most difficult period was from the 1932 to the 1933 harvest. When Kulak sabotage added to the difficulties of inefficient organization caused a grain shortage that put the whole country on short rations. She also writes, I traveled the countryside in those years and know what occurred. Stalin certainly promoted the change and guided it, but the drive for collectivization went so much faster than Stalin planned that there were not enough machines ready for the farms nor enough bookkeepers and managers. Hopeful inefficiency combined with a panic slaying of livestock under Kulak urging and with two dry years brought serious food shortage in 1932, two years after Stalin's alleged pressures. Even the famous anti-communist historian Robert Conquest admits, rather than allow their cattle to fall into the hands of the state, they slaughtered half the country's herd, 
By March, it was plain that disaster had overtaken the countryside. So the food shortages were not due to socialism on any systematic level, but were due to the difficulties of a largely feudal society attempting to modernize, as well as the conflict with the Kulak class. These problems were eventually solved, however, and the result was a massive boost in food production. You can see here the calorie per person per day before the USSR and in the time of the NEP. We see it drop from the reasons listed, then eventually spike. It dips a little during the war and then rises back up. So the idea that there was just this massive epidemic of starvation, that everyone was always hungry, nobody ever got enough to eat, is a complete lie. Collectivization is what solved food problems and boosted food production. Testimony from people that actually lived in the OSSR contend that their fridges and pantries were always full of food. For example, Julia Hodkins recalls her and her family's experience with food in the USSR. People were buying butter, milk, chicken, and meat there. Somebody once commented on this, saying that though the shops were empty, people's fridges were nevertheless full. And it is true, you know, when you come to visit somebody, you know, in the Soviet Union, they Nice now it's important to ask, how much better is capitalism with food? Well, under capitalism, you can only obtain food if you have the money to buy it. So areas stricken with poverty would simply just have to go without. And this is exactly what happens. 21,000 people a day die due to starvation. That's one person every four seconds. Seven million people a year. Most of these are children. Even in America, a first world country, around 20% of the population are food insecure. So capitalists like to point to the bread lines within the USSR while ignoring the context behind them. They ignore the millions who die due to poverty and ignore the modernized bread lines within their own countries in the form of government aid. It is not communism which should be associated with starvation and food problems, but capitalism. But let's keep the efficiency of capitalism and throw out unused bread while people starve. 